John Hannafin, lecturer at LIT on animation and game design and multimedia. Yes, all three Emer, yeah. yeah, and soon visual effects maybe. That could be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, looking forward to that so, one. So, um, Design Carmel is a project that's just about to kick off. Um, it's very much specifically aimed at younger people and yeah. people who might be interested in this area as a career choice. Yeah, Generation Z is who it's aimed at, yeah. And I guess that's a consequence of where Design Clamel, ha how it's come about this year. So as you are aware, I'm involved in a European project, inter-regional Atlantic area project called 4H Create. And at a high level, the project is trying to support innovation in the creative and cultural industries. Mm -hmm. But specifically, it's trying to support innovation in the creative and cultural industries or the CCIs as they call them. Mm -hmm by engaging with Generation Z. Okay, define Generation Z so, for anybody. Yeah, so Generation Z are, you know, 14 to 24 year olds. And it depends sort of what literature you read, but they're typically around that age, 14 mm -hmm. to, so teenagers and, and, and a bit beyond. Uh, so they, they follow on from Generation Y, who are often called the Millennials, uh, which follows on from Generation mm. X, which is probably, I don't know, we, do we even make Generation X? We probably make Generation X. <laughs> Maybe I do. So yeah, so, so Gen Zs, Gen Zers are sort of teenagers and young adults, I, I guess you'd, you'd say. So this project, uh, this European project, specifically targets Generation Z. Mm -hmm. And that generation, it's fair to say, is very, very, very comfortable in a digital yes, world. Yes, very sort of digital native. Mm -hmm. uh, so very comfortable with it and are a very creative generation. Some would argue that where they have moved on from the previous generation is generation Y were somewhat defined by being consumers of technology. Whereas Gen Zs have definitely put their stamp as being creators. And they're very culturally aware. They're creating their own culture actually using mm. technology. So yeah, they're a really, really interesting group to target. Mm. Uh, so the project was a combination of let's, let's work with Gen Zers, mm. young people, in an effort to try and improve the innovation capacity of creative and cultural industries. And Europe very much advocates what's known as a quadruple helix approach to innovation. And it's, it's sort of a big bureaucratic term. But really what it means is if you want to sort of stimulate innovation in a region, you want sort of the local government coming together with third level education, industry and the general public. It's a very collaborative. A very col that's it. That's makes it. Sense. makes absolute yeah. sense. The project is very much about sort of, you know, creating innovative capacity through a very collaborative process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's what, what I find actually interesting is Europe would advocate the coming together of sort of what they call local government, which mm -hmm. would be sort of for us, the county council, yeah. uh, third level education, uh, industry and uh the general public. Now, in particular, we're interested in Generation Z in this project, but they're, they're now sort of touting a quintuplet helix. They're saying there's, there's a fifth yeah. sort of leg to the stool, mm -hmm. and that's the environment. That when, when, you, when you're sort of trying to create innovation within a region, not only do the four of those sort of entities have to come together, mm -hmm. but you also have to be very conscious of the environment, which yeah. is an interesting sort of direction. That Europe is taking no, as well yeah, with all this. It's, gorgeous, yeah, it's it? great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Back to the specific events that are taking place here. Killian. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Is um. I'm I'm kind of unsure as to what his role is okay. in the. It's very interesting. I was at the workshop, the first part of it. Yeah. Where, as we are the CCI. That's it. Putting across our experiences of the way things are. And Killian is, well, he's facilitating between the CCIs and the students. So what's the aim for them? So our aim with all of these workshops is mm. to try and co-create. So bring sort of the creatives and Generation Z and sort of third level education and get them to co-create collectively. Mm. So in, in the one you're referring to, the idea was and still is, I hope, uh, mm -hmm. that Killian goes and talks to the creative and cultural industries, the local, the local CCIs, mm -hmm. and they sort of define some challenges that they feel would benefit from young people's input Push, into yeah, it. Yeah. So he's taken that challenge or challenges, mm -hmm. and this morning, the Monday morning, he has come together with about 30 uh, young people. Mm -hmm. And he's presented those challenges to them. And he's workshopping them through a, a sort of a, what they call a design thinking process. Mm. 
So it's very collaborative, very end user driven. And the Gen Zers are trying to come up with solutions to the challenges that the, the local CCI is. It's definitely not technology focused. Right. It's certainly not. Now, if, if sort of an app falls out of it, well and good, an yeah, app falls yeah, out of it. Yeah. But it's not, you know. So the you, solutions don't have to be based oh, in technology. No, not at all. It's not at all. Not it's at all. Case not at all. Very interesting to hear their opinions yeah. come back because yeah. it's not something you would have a chance to collect very often. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully they'll come up with some interesting ideas. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it'll be of use. And then hopefully, my, my hope really is that this kind collaborative exercise I have to try, still try to figure out how to sustain it in mm-hmm. the long term, you know what I mean, like beyond Design Clamel, because it was really good of the local creatives to come together, yeah. give up their time, you know, offer up some sort of challenges. Mm-hmm. Then it was great that the young people engaged with them. But we need to try and figure out how to do it on a more how regular basis, going, because yeah, yeah. I, I, my sense is that like lots of clubs and organisations, cultural and creative organisations, one of their first questions is, how can we engage young people better? You know, mm-hmm. and we have young people, so we should be asking the young people to come up with a solution to that question. You know? Yeah, well, they're the best people they're, ones exactly, to, to say exactly. what they want. Yes. So, so, yeah, it's difficult for people to know how to cater for yeah. a specific uh, target audience when you don't know what they exactly. want. Exactly. And I think even taking it a step further is rather than create something and hope that, you know, the young people come to it, bring the young people into the creating of it. Not at all dissimilar to the really, really great exhibition that was on in the Art Centre earlier this year, I think, with Loretta's students yes. called Transition. Uh, Transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a really interesting idea. That's a that's real co-creation going on. You know, that's a real that's it in practice yeah. where rather than an art centre sort of bring in art and say here you go can everyone come in and look and enjoy this let the students create the exhibition it so and it's and so it's facilitated by the arts so there's a lot yeah. of co-creation it's been collectively created by yeah. the art centre teachers young people yeah. and that that's a super example of sort of co-creation of working yeah, really well. yeah it really did work well yeah. and they really got into it yes and it was so encouraging to see and there's, there's, there was another really interesting example we're actually the presentation girls, the mm. secondary school girls in the presentation, and they worked with the museum, creating a narrative around old artefacts. Okay. Um, and it was a really, really interesting experience. And they exhibited it in the museum then after, afterwards as well. So that's the type of stuff. Yeah, I don't know what the solution to that is. It'll be very, very interesting to see what comes out of Killian and the co-creation. Yeah, I guess going in with an open mind is the, is the trick. Mm. Anything could come out of it, mm. uh, you know, mm. anything could come out of it. And then to follow on on that sort of co-creation team and mm. inviting young people in to create with you, we, I, I guess because of what we do in LIT Clamel, but we also have animators and, and game artists. Um, so we've invited down an award-winning animation studio Paper Panther and they're running a sort of co-creation workshop with our students and opening it up to the general public, a second one that they're opening up to the general public. And again the idea is they're coming down with some briefs that they've mm-hmm. actually received from industry uh, because they would create um, adverts, uh, use ad- animation to create adverts, TV adverts for example. Mm-hmm. So they're going to sort of work with the young people in trying to... Like, they're not going to come out with an animation after yeah. a day, but they will come out with some, hopefully, some nuggets, uh, you know, ideas as to... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They do a lovely blend of old-fashioned techniques they, with... They do. ...technology. Really, really nice what yeah. they do. So, thankfully, through the, the European project that I'm involved in, I was able to sort of bring in these people and open them up to the general public as well, which is great. The community outside of the college, sort of, benefits yeah. from it so they're running a workshop on this Thursday but next week then during sort of the Halloween break when school students are off um, we've got a workshop and it's we're targeting sort of the leaving sort of cycle students the older mm-hmm. the older students so that should be really interesting and then one of the studio members from Paper Panther has kindly also agreed to do a talk here in the Art Centre which is also great mm-hmm. uh, getting out into the community um, then we have a game design workshop again all in the under the veil of co-creation and so we have a really interesting game designer a uh, board game designer uh, Robin O'Keefe is his name and he's coming and working with our students on Thursday and again he's in the process of making a game uh, he's made many so he is looking to sort of co-create with the students around some ideas he already has for mm-hmm. the games mm-hmm. uh, but he's also very interested in how to tell stories using games so he's very interested 
interested in that whole narrative and how games can bring out a narrative in games. So that's going to be really interesting. And then we're also opening one up to the general public next weekend during the that Halloween break, where one of our own game designers, Adrian Feeling, is going to run one for again leaving search cycle students. So then the another event is uh, the Careers Day event. Mm-hmm. Now, to be honest with you, the Careers Day event is an event that happens every year anyway. Anyway, yeah. But uh, we sort of bundled it all in with mm-hmm. the Design Clamel. So yeah, we have a really, really nice lineup. This Wednesday, the 23rd of October, we've got the CEO of, uh, from Story Toys, Emmett O'Neill. Story Toys uh, create kids apps and they are, they're very, very successful. They're a really, really interesting Irish firm. And they're like regularly featuring in the top 10 list on the app store, you know, even in the US. Um, so they're coming down to talk to not, not particularly our students, but just young people in, in the region that would be interested in exploring a career in sort of what we call the digital arts. We also have a, a guy coming from Screen Ireland from, from the visual effects industry. Uh, he'll be giving a talk. And then we have two of our ex-students. One of them is working with Immersive VR down at Waterford, doing really interesting sort of VR experiences. And Vita then is working in Dublin as a visual effects artist so the hope is that and the intent is that young people in the region served by LIT Clamel which is sort of quite a wide region the, the intent of the careers day is genuinely to sort of just put on this event and say listen if there's young people out there who would be interested in, in sort of a career in the digital arts or just want to learn a little bit more about it come along mm-hmm. come along listen to these people from industry tell their story mm-hmm. and if you go away thinking golly I, I would love to pursue a career in this well then maybe you might consider us as a college to go to or not that's mm-hmm. fine too or maybe you'll come away thinking you know it's not for me and that's mm-hmm. sort of a result as well that's in, in many Anyways, yeah. 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 So um, um, the portfolio day, the ninth, Saturday the ninth of November. I think anyone who's sort of interested in, in pursuing a career in any of this, I would definitely recommend that they go to the careers day if it hasn't passed by the time this, this podcast comes out, which is on the twenty third, I think. Yeah, the t- Wednesday the twenty third. The other one is on the ninth of November, on Saturday the ninth of November on the campus in Clammel. We have a portfolio and CEO information morning. And it's a morning where a lot of young people and their parents come along and we we sort of explain what we look for in a portfolio. And we show them examples of sort of last year's portfolios and what we thought was good and what we didn't think was so good. So I think people get a lot out of that day. That would be interesting because anybody who's getting ready to go to art college has a very specific set of stuff that they need in their portfolio. Yeah. And I imagine that stuff is not the same stuff that you're looking for. You know, a lot of it is. Is it? Yeah, because yeah. R- really the, the, the portfolio's purpose really is just to sort of measure sort of creative potential, okay. you know, yeah. in, in whatever way you want to express yeah. that. So, it, like, a lot of people are fearful that, you know, oh my goodness, I, I'm going to have to put lots of gaming type of stuff into my portfolio or animation-y stuff into my portfolio. Not, so not, not, not necessarily, not necessarily. So, uh, it's a worthwhile morning just to, you know, come along, ask some questions, meet the staff and, and, and see. Definitely a lovely way to, yeah. you know, introduce yourself to yeah. it and to the place. And that's for specifically fifth and sixth years, really. Th- that's typically years. who come along, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes we get transition years along, but it's yeah. usually people who are sort of you know looking for a maybe doing a course in this in college yeah. and are just coming to pick our brains as to sort of what to expect in a portfolio and just another assessment. question all the courses now require a portfolio do they? with the exception of creative media and design okay. creative yeah. media and design doesn't but yes the, the game art and design course the digital animation production course and the new visual effects course okay. just a portfolio so typically the way it works they, they hand in their portfolio it's usually around march yeah. uh, and it's assessed and it's handed back within like okay. an hour or two so it's wor- it is definitely worth going along to see what the assessors look for in portfolios. Very interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, John, thanks for your time. Thank you, um, Emer. Best of luck with it all.